Welcome back. If it has joined us, you're watching the News at 10, broadcasting on channels television live from Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. Federal Executive Council convenes emergency meeting. Members study details of the 2016 budget. Chief of Air Staff gives report on fight against insurgency. Confirms surrender of Boko Haram members. Authorities of University of Lagos shut down school following student protests over water and power shortages. And prime suspect in November's Paris terror attacks, Mohamed Abrini, is arrested. Remember all our top stories you can find on our website, channelstv.com and on youtube.com slash channelsweb. You can also visit m.channelstv.com to view us live on a mobile device and download the Channel TV app for Android, iOS and Windows phones from their respective stores. To go a step further, interact with the Channel Eyewitness feature on the Channel TV app. For those pictures or videos you'd like to share with us, tap the application on your device Swipe to reveal the eyewitness menu and follow the instructions. Airtel, the smartphone network. Let's take a look at some of the pictures you sent into our eyewitness portal. We're beginning with a fuel queues at uh, petrol stations. As first pictures from Plateau State in the capital, Joss, a motorist waiting to buy fuel. The situation is much the same in Iwo in Oshun State. Uh, motorists and commercial motorcyclists waiting to buy fuel at a petrol station. Our reporter says the product is unavailable in most service stations. Our next photo shows the aftermath of a road accident involving a commercial bus along the Lokoja Abuja Highway. Our eyewitness reporter advises commercial bus drivers who adhere to speed limits. This next photo was sent in from Ogunta, the additional junction in the Agege area here in Lagos. It shows refuse dumped along the roadside. Our eyewitness reporter wants residents in the area to stop dumping refuse indiscriminately. A final photo is from Akwaibom State. It shows the impact of gully erosion. Our eyewitness reporter calls on local council and state authorities to help fix it. <laughs> Airtel, the smartphone network. Let's get more of the news at 10 now. Yemi Sikpai is standing by in Abuja. Hi, Yemi C. Hello, Amarachi. Great to see you and welcome to Abuja, the nation's capital. The, the municipal council election is holding tomorrow across the federal capital territory and ahead of the exercise, the police warn thugs to steer clear of polling units or face the wrath of the law. The commissioner of police in charge of the elections gave the warning in Abuja where he said the force will provide adequate personnel to secure voters and election materials during the exercise. However, some members of the accredited observer groups are questioning the length of time it takes for materials to be taken to locations from INEC. At last, the time has come for the FCT elections to take place. The Independent Electoral Commission in Abuja is expected to, as usual, conduct the elections which will produce principal officers into the six area councils of the federal capital city. The FCT Police Command says it is not taking the elections lightly and would not tolerate anything that will disrupt the day. It wants thugs to steer clear of the polling units or face the law. If you are able to pay for thuggery and these thugs do inflict injury on any members of the FCT during this election, their sponsors will not go scot free. They will be dealt with according to the law. Meanwhile, some members of the civil society organizations believe that the political parties did not engage in much sensitization to mobilize the electorate for Saturday's elections. On the part of the political parties and candidates, I worry that they have not done enough. A mobilization of voters to, to give us the possibility of, of a good turnout. I, I fear that um, lots of people do not know who the candidates are, who the parties are, who is contesting elections. So I think that there is some sense in which there is a feeling that there is not adequate mobilization of voters. 
Outside the premises of the FCT INEC office, mixed reactions trail the conduct of the elections among some of the accredited observers. The manpower required for the job is adequate to run the election. So there is not going to be any issues pertaining to uh, the credibility of this election. The constraint we are having till now is that most of the uh, accredited observers have not gotten their tag and they've not gotten their package for the tomorrow's election. Meanwhile, some residents are confident that the polls will be peaceful. I'm sure there is a double security on ground, particularly in this FCT, so I don't think we'll have any problem of security. Uh, FCT is peaceful, so we hope for adequate security. The area council's elections were postponed to April after the FCT INEC complained that it was unable to mobilize staff for the exercise. I'm now being joined on the news at 10 by the resident electoral commissioner for the FCT, Professor Jacob Jatto. Professor, thank you so much for joining us on the News at 10. Now, some observers are saying that INEG did not mobilize people early enough. Why is this? Uh, well, uh, I think uh, we have mobilized people early enough, and uh, we have uh, already put uh, everything in place to make sure that the elections are held successfully. So are you expecting a low or high turnout? Well, we are expecting a, an average or more turnout than the last uh, elections. Partly because you know the awareness has been quite uh, high now, and the people are ready to come and vote. Generally, local elections don't attract many people, especially those in the city. But this time around, I think uh, people will want to come and vote. And what about the issue of logistics? What challenges are you facing there? Well, we have some challenges, very few challenges, but uh, we have taken care of that, especially in movement of uh, personnel to the uh, polling. Uh, centers. But then, of course, uh, as you are aware that uh, INEC has put in place, whereby we have to lodge uh, the personnel and materials uh, in the night before the elections. Like today, now, this night, they are lodged in the what we call the racks. So we have moved them there, and uh, we hope that tomorrow, very early in the morning, say by 4 a.m., they will start movement from the racks to the polling units. What have you done in terms of security? How are you going to ensure that security is not breached tomorrow? Yeah, well, uh, first of all, you know there's a restriction of movement uh, from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. And, of course, also the security, the police force have taken everything, you know, in order to make sure that uh, there is tight entrances, especially to the FCT. From this night, around 12 midnight, they will block all the entrances to FCT to make sure that the well place is well secured. And some are actually arguing that there needs to be a bit more awareness in terms of what actually is going to happen tomorrow. Some we'll people be, don't know what, uh, what we'll they be. actually <laughs> need to do to go through the voting process. For example, yes. they'll be accredited and then will they vote immediately? Yes, yes. Well, we've been doing that in the voter education. We've been telling people that uh, this time around, the voting and I mean the accreditation and voting is simultaneous. That is to say, once you come, you will be accredited and then you will be given a ballot paper. Thereafter, you go and vote. Immediately you finish, you can decide either to stay or you can move, uh, go home, go back home. Thank you so much for joining us on the News at 10, Professor Jato. Thank you very much.